Hi, I'm Steffi Di Domenico Antonio. Uh, I'm currently in the Toronto production of Come From Away, and I play the role of Janice Mosier and others. Yeah, that's it. Tell oh, me. do you want me to elaborate more about you can. myself? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Okay, uh, what else? Um, I was born in Montreal, uh, but then I grew up in Ottawa. And then after that, I moved to Toronto to pursue a career in acting, and now here we are. That's all you need to know, I guess. <laughs> when did you first hear about Come From Away? Um, I first heard about Come From Away, actually, how many years ago was it? They did a uh, workshop production at Sheridan College, which is where it all started. But I saw the second incarnation of the uh, workshop at the Panasonic Theatre. It was like a staged reading, like they had uh, their books in front of them. And I remember being so moved by it and so, I just thought it was so beautiful and like, describe the, the human kindness experience so perfectly and so beautifully, I remember thinking like, wow, this show's gonna go so far, and now here we are. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And then I saw it um, here in Toronto when they were doing uh, production for two months before they went to New York. And then after that, I saw it again in New York, and then I was in it. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. And what were the auditions like? How did you get the part? Oh. The auditions were very short for me. Um, I remember that it was uh, the summer of 2017. It was around, I want to say like June or something. It was warm outside. I just got an email from my agent that I was going to be going into final callbacks. Um, and I was going to meet the whole team there. I didn't have any preliminary auditions or anything like that. I kind of just like went in and hit the ground running. Um, the whole team was there, the director Chris, the choreographer Kelly, Divine, um, David and Irene who wrote it were there. I just remember it being a very stressful experience, but I only went in one time and I remember I think it was on a Thursday or a Friday and then on Sunday afternoon I was at laser tag and my agent called me. She never calls me on the weekend like ever. She just called me and she said like, hey, I couldn't wait until Monday morning to tell you this, but I just got an email and um, you're going to be getting an offer for Come From Way. And I freaked out. It was like the craziest news ever. Um, it was really cool. And now, yeah, here we are. <laughs> yeah, so fast. Mm -hmm. So fast. Oh my God, it was so fast. Like you don't understand. It was so fast. I can't even begin to express how quickly it was. Like. I auditioned, my audition was what, like maybe 15, 20 minutes max, like I sang music from the show, I did a couple of scenes from the show, a couple of different characters, and then I did a, uh, I, what else did I do? Oh, I played my ukulele, I brought my ukulele, I sat and sang a song, then I, I did some scales with the music director on the piano, and, uh, and then they asked me to stay to dance, then I did a dance call. And then, like, yeah, like a few days later, I just got a phone call, which is just crazy. I don't know, just nuts. But I'm here, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What was it like learning, uh, you know, the choreography and everything? The choreography, oh my god, you're so well versed in the show. Uh, yes, the choreography was really difficult to learn. I think out of all of the aspects, the show's very intricate and very specific. And uh, the details are really important. And one of those details uh, is moving the chairs, moving the tables, because we're trying to create different uh, scenes, different universes, like different places. We have like over, I think like 300 spike marks on the set, like little pieces of tape that tell us uh, where we need to leave the chairs and the tables and all that stuff. And like, honestly, I just remember being in rehearsals and seeing all the chairs we had to deal with, like seeing all the spike marks, all the colors also. So we had to learn and memorize the color for every scene that we had to, to do the transitions for. Um, that was, yeah, it was really stressful at first. I'm not gonna lie, like I felt like it was probably the hardest part of the show to learn. Like on top of like accents, 
um, um, changing our clothes, uh, changing, you know, voices, body language, like all that stuff, playing different people, choreography, lines, uh, dancing, all that stuff. And then you had to like add that element. I think that element was probably one of the hardest elements to like uh, get get perfectly. Because also it's like a, a dance, like I have to go at a certain speed for the other person not to run into me. Like the traffic on stage is also very intricate. So uh, yeah, that was definitely super challenging, but very cool. Yeah. Are you on stage right or left? I start the show on stage left. Tell me about the rituals that you do. Oh yes, you've heard about it, I'm sure at this point. Um, before the show, <laughs> we'll have a, we'll do a circle with like all the crew guys, stage managers, and the people from stage left who start from there. And we'll just like do a circle and then we'll say like something on the rock. So like if it's like Friday night, like today for example, um, we'll go like Friday night on the rock, Friday night on the rock, and then we'll go, we are here. <laughs> so that's like our ritual, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Do you touch the flags? Um, James Call touches the flags. I don't personally touch the flags, though I have a few times, I guess. But for the most part, I don't touch the flags. But now that I know that he does that, I feel like I should do that, too. Oh, I have another ritual that I do before I go on stage. I always knock on wood. So I'll knock on the um, Stage. the floor. Yeah, the, just the floorboards because they're, you know, our set is fully made of wood, blue wood. So I'll knock on wood before I go on stage. It's just like, I have to do it. If not, I feel like, see, now I said it and now I have to do it just in case. <laughs> yeah, I'm superstitious. Yeah. What was it like to work with the Revolve? Oh, the Revolve. Um, the Revolve was really fun to work with. At first though, I have to say it was very disorienting and very confusing. Um, so our, our um, choreographer and our assistant choreographer, like in the rehearsal hall, what's so great is that we got to rehearse with a turntable in the rehearsal hall, so that's amazing. Um, so our choreographer and assistant choreographer were like, okay, so this is what you're gonna do. Aim for this chair when the revolve starts going. Then you have to like go around this chair and around this chair and you're basically gonna go to the right until you get off stage. And you're like, okay, that sounds like super simple, right? And then they're like, okay, gang, turntable moving. And then they start moving the turntable. And honestly, I didn't know what world I was in. I don't know what room I was in. I was like, I have no idea what direction I'm going in. It was really strange. And then somebody had to like guide me, be like, come this way, you know, from like, <laughs> but then once you get the hang of it, it's like really fun. And I think the reveal of it, like, in, um, in the moment in the show when it happens, I think it's so effective. I remember seeing it and you're like, oh, it's just such a beautiful moment. I think it's so uh, incredible that it's a part of the set. It's such a simple thing. And though I think it's so effective and um, visually so entrancing to kind of like see the world move around you. And it's a really cool piece of scenery. Yeah. <laughs> Did seeing the show beforehand help you or, uh, you know, you saw it on Broadway beforehand, oh, yeah. so it's like, and then you yeah. have to play your own, like, you know, Jenny's. Totally, yeah. Um, that's a great question. Did it feel like, um, I think it helped seeing the show beforehand. Uh, I saw it, like I said, a couple of times before I started uh, rehearsing it. Uh, I thought it was very helpful. I love seeing other people's interpretations and all that stuff. And at that point when I saw it, I didn't have an idea of what I was going to do with it yet. So I think it was like very helpful. And I kind of, the first time I saw it, of course I didn't know I was gonna be in it. I saw it for fun. Uh, so I kind of took it in and it was like such a beautiful story to move me and I cried and I laughed and it was such a beautiful experience. And then um, the second time I saw it on Broadway New York, I did know I was doing the show. So I kind of like only watched the Janice sort of, like I kind of just watched her do her thing. And I was trying to like figure out kind of what her track is sort of, but I thought it was really helpful. It was really cool. And I think the special thing about this show particularly 
is that it doesn't matter like who you are. Like all the characters could really be anyone and and um I think what makes it special is that everybody can bring their individuality to the roles and and bring themselves to it and I think that's why the cast can be so diverse and so different and so um yeah, eclectic. Like you can like everybody sort of has their own thing, their unique thing that they can bring to it. And I think that's one of the st strongest part of the show that, uh, yeah, the cast can like really be anyone and everyone. Like it's just such a, a community and like a shared, yeah. It's just like such a, I'm always baffled at how beautiful the show is and how people bring themselves to it. So all of the casts that I've seen do it, it's just like, what a special thing, you know? I don't feel like when I started rehearsing for the show that I had to do it a certain way, you know what I mean? The director was very open about saying, hey, you guys can like make this whatever you, you want to bring to it, uh, as long as it's like frank and honest and open and that you're kind of communicating like you're talking to your best friend except there's a thousand people there, you know what I mean? That it's like a really personal experience. And I think that's really great. Speaking of community, what mm -hmm. is it like to meet the real people and Commander Gander? Yeah, oh my gosh. Meeting the real people was like out of this world. I was really nervous at first. I felt like I, felt like I needed to prove myself and I didn't want them to be like disappointed in how I was playing the part or whatever. So I play Janice Mosier, who is like half of uh, Brian Mosier and half of Janice Gowdy. So they were kind of like, it was made into a composite character, I think, to kind of tell both of their stories like all at once. Um, so I got to like meet, I played two people. So I guess the good thing about that is that I didn't feel like I had to imitate anybody because how in the world could I, could I possibly imitate a man and a woman together into one thing? So that was nice. Um, but I definitely wanted to just, I wanted to like honor them and like make them proud and respect the story. And I still want to do that, of course. And when I met them, I remember it was like right before we opened in Toronto at the um, Royal Alexandra Theater. And uh, we were doing a press day. So I had to wake up at like 4.30 a.m. in the morning or something, like get ready, put some makeup on my face, like fix my hair, get dressed, and like go do interviews with them before we open the show. So I met them outside. It was still pitch dark outside. And I met them on the street at 5 a.m. in the morning and it was just so warm and like everything I could have possibly imagined people from Newfoundland greeting you. Just Janice and Brian started like screaming and yelling and they were like, oh my God, Steffi, it's so nice to finally meet you. And we like all hugged and it was like so exciting. Honestly, just retelling it now just makes me so happy. <laughs> it was so much fun. Like it was so sweet and they were so supportive and so nice and we still keep in touch. And um, yeah, Brian just texted me the other day uh, and we chat a bit and kind of keep each other posted. And uh, yeah, they were also a really big help in kind of getting into the world of Newfoundland. I had never been there before. Um, so, so yeah, and it was funny, int uh, really interesting hearing their accents and hearing kind of who they are and, and hearing their really personal stories and like firsthand, not from like reading the script or hearing our director talk about it or the writers talking about it. Like it was like firsthand experience, like Brian telling me like this, these amazing stories and like Janice telling me, oh yeah, like it was actually my second day on the job, like at the, at the newspaper. And it's just like, what a crazy, it's just such a crazy, it's crazy when I remind myself that this is a true story. Where is Christine? Sorry, what? Where is Christine? Like, did you kiss Oh, yes, cause? of course. Oh my God, yes. I was screeched in twice, actually. Twice? Yes. <laughs> I can't decide which time. No, I know which time was worse. The second time was actually worse. You would think after the first time that I would have had experience and been okay <laughs> with um, with it, but it was worse the second time. The first time we were in Toronto, so we don't know if it really actually counts. 
uh, because you need to be screeched in on um, Newfoundland soil. Right. So we were screeched in, uh, a bunch of us were at, at a bar in Toronto right before our opening night at the Royal Alexandra Theatre. And um, yeah, it was hysterical. I mean, this uh, Claude, the mayor of Gander, the previous mayor of Gander, uh, was there doing the ceremony. We had to say a bunch of tongue twisters and like weird things that Newfoundlanders say. And then he brought out like this bologna, like the Vienna sausages, like all this like gross stuff. Like honestly, I didn't very much enjoy. And then after that, uh, we had to kiss the cod. The cod was apparently like fl flown in from somewhere. I don't remember, but like, listen, it didn't, it was not in good shape. Like it came out of this styrofoam box. It was defrosted. It was like falling apart. Like the guts were falling out of the neck and it, it smelled disgusting. It was really slimy. It was falling apart. And like the eyes were like gouged out. It was like it's something from a horror movie, honestly. <laughs> um, but we all had to kiss the cod. Honestly, it was slimy and like I could taste it in my mouth for like the rest of the night. No matter how many times I brushed my teeth, like it just did not help. And then I tried Screech for the first time and I actually like Screech. I thought that was pretty good. And then the second time we got Screech, it was actually in Gander um, at the bar. I, I think I'm a Jiggers, I think, or something. And um, that second time I, f I found was actually more elaborate. There were mo more things to eat. It was kind of like Fear Factor. Like there was like more stuff that you had to eat. Like there's one thing in particular I will never forget for as long as I live. It was called the Kaplan or something, a Kaplan. It's like this dried little fish. It's like a little bigger than a sardine, I guess. Listen, I <laughs> could not eat it. I could not eat it. I like took one bite, I bit the head off. I thought I was gonna vomit like then and there, like the second I had it in my mouth. It was like chewy but dry all at the same time way too salty like it tasted like you took a big drink from the ocean like it was disgusting and uh, honestly it was um disgusting and i didn't finish it uh brian mosher was actually screeching us in with oz the uh oz fudge and uh he was like come on Steffi, do it do it if not it doesn't count like if you don't finish it it won't count it won't count i really couldn't do it and then somebody just took it out of my hands and like hid it in a napkin Thank God, because I thought I was going to vomit. I swallowed the head, at least. And then I was like, that's enough for me. Like, I can't, I can't fathom eating any more than this. And then we had to eat again the sausage, the bologna. We, we tried, we had some mints, like purity mints, which is like uh, from Newfoundland. Um, the Kaplan. Uh, yeah, and then we did the screech. We kissed the cod. This time the cod was frozen, which was a lot better. We all kind of had a ritualistic kiss with the cod. Like, everybody made it really good. Some people used tongue. It was very, it was very graphic. It got very graphic. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that second time was really special because also we were on Newfoundland soil. We were in Gander. Brian screeched me in. It was just, like, very special. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sounds so, a lot. Memorable. Yeah, it was very memorable, if nothing else. It was very memorable. And then we got our little certificates that said that we completed the tasks, and we are honorary Newfoundlanders now. And I really do feel that. I feel like I am. Doing this show every night, plus the screech in, I just feel like, yeah, I'm a Newfoundlander now, for sure. <laughs> what do you remember about your very first performance in Come From Away? <sighs> yeah. Well, my very first performance in Come From Away was in Winnipeg. It was in January. It was minus 40 degrees Celsius outside. It was freezing cold. I remember being honestly so terrified. <laughs> I was so terrified, I was so nervous, but I was really excited. Um, it was just like, what a moment. Like, it was just a big moment. I, I'm like, I think about it and I'm there again, like just waiting for a cue light to go off and to hear the drum, you know, the baron. And uh, it was just like, it was surreal. Like, I was just like, okay, the light's gonna go off. Like, I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna walk out on stage and then we'll just see what happens. I just need to trust myself. I guess the thing about the show too is that it moves so quickly. It's so fast. You don't really have time to think, so you have to just go with the flow and and be really aware, really present, and really alert, and kind of just like 
and just, it's a moving train. When the train starts, you just have to get on, you can't get off. It's like a hundred minutes, you're on the train, it's moving really quickly, you just go, 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 go. So it kind of felt like that. It was like a little surreal, a little out of body, but at the end, I remember feeling such an enormous sense of pride for achieving, for, for everyone, for like, for just achieving, like we did it, like, what a feat. Like, it was just like, I was proud of everyone. I was proud of myself. I was excited and happy that we get to do it for so long and that we get to share the story. And I think um, it's just, yeah, it feels so special to be a part of. That's an understatement, you know? I heard that you had a very special performance recently. Yes. We had a relaxed performance that happened on May 26, 2019. Uh, yeah, so apparently this relaxed performance was actually the first time that the Mervishes in Toronto have done this for a Broadway show, like for a Broadway production of a show. So yeah, really special. Um, it was really interesting. It was really new. Um, a lot of the technical aspects of the show were mostly the same. Some of the sound was different. Some of the lights were different to accommodate the patrons that were coming that day. And one of the things I liked the most about actually that performance is that um, the house lights were half up. Um, so it wasn't, the audience was in complete darkness. And I actually loved that because I could actually make eye contact with people in the orchestra and I could see how people were reacting more. Usually when the light's on you and you're looking and you're doing the direct address, in the show, you can't see people's faces. It's kind of like you can see blobs or like general shapes, but you can't see faces. So this was like actually really special because I could like actually make eye contact with people and see how they were reacting or, how, you know, them being present. And like, I feel like it actually grounded me a lot more and, and was really like an interesting experience. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to talk about? Oh, that's my turn now. Man, what should I talk about? Um, I'm trying to think. You know, since this is going in the archives, I just want to remember, like, you know, even just for me, I guess I want to say that what's so funny is that when I went in for my audition, my first audition, my first and my last audition for this, um, I never thought in a million years I was, I was actually going to be in the show. You know, uh, the actress that played it before, like, was older than me, and I, I didn't think that they were looking for my type of perform performer. I, I really didn't think, like, they were looking for me. You know what I mean? So when I went in, I kind of just went, like, throw caution to, caution to the wind. Just do your best. Like, it's going to be great. I don't think you're getting this anyway, so you might as well just have a good time, you know? <laughs> So I kind of went into the audition and I was like, I'm not getting this. I might as well just have a good time. I get to meet these amazing people who like been nominated for Tony Awards and like, you know, like these incredible creators who like, who made this show that like has blown up and become like one of the biggest, well, the biggest show to ever come out of Canada. Just the pride, like it overflows out of me, like to think this is a Canadian story written by Canadians with a full Canadian cast in Toronto. It's just like, what a special thing. Like, how often will I be able to say in my lifetime, in my career, that I was a part of this? Like, it's so amazing because you know that like 10 years from now, if it's not still running, like, I just think it's still going to open all over the world. It's still going to like have a long life. And well, it's going to Australia soon. It's going to Australia. And there's going to be a movie. Exactly. The movie, Australia, London. Um, where else is it? Broadway, us, like... National tour. National tour. Like, it's been, the story is spreading so fast, and I feel an incredible sense of, like, duty and honor and responsibility in telling the story every night. What a special experience. How many people, you know, are going to be able to say they were a part of this, like, really at its core, and I just think, what a special thing. I just want to remember that forever, just even, like, years and years and years from now, go, like, I was... I got to be a part of one, one of the biggest phenomenons that Canadian theater or theater in general has like ever seen. Just what an incredible, it's just been an incredible experience. Also the story is so important for this day and age, human kindness and like how, uh, how goodness will always trump evil and, and, and you know, um, 
just like, yeah, these people who like ordinary people, just like welcoming people with open arms, no matter their race or where they were coming from or their orientation or their background or their whatever. Wow, we all need to take a page from their book. Yeah. What's your favorite come from away moment, if you have to choose only one? Oh, like in the show? No, in general, like in anything general. related to the show, or in the show itself, whatever you prefer. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Um, yeah, I think my favorite moment of being a part of the show so far was actually going to Newfoundland. Um, we went to Newfoundland in January 2019 uh, to go do the show there. But honestly, it was like the second I landed and we got to the hotel and I saw, um, we got there so late, our flights got delayed and it was like such a nightmare to like actually get there. But once we got there, it was like two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning or something. I went to bed and then when I woke up, I opened my blinds and we were in this like really fancy hotel where the blinds opened with a button. Like you press a button and it was just like open really slowly. And, and my window was like facing, facing the Atlantic Ocean. Like it was just, there were ships coming in and like the sun was there and it's like this beautiful view and like these rocks. And, and I remember being absolutely flabbergasted that this place exists in the world. Like it is breathtakingly beautiful. Like just when the blinds went up, I was just like, oh my God, this is my job. Like I have to be here for my job and like look at this incredible view, look at this show that I get to do about this place. It was just really special to actually get to like have my feet on Newfoundland soil and go, now I can say I've been here, now I can say I've tried Towton's, I've tried fish and cheese, I've tried like uh, fisherman's brews, I tried like all the stuff that you need to try in Newfoundland. And it was, um, it was really like such a special experience. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi. <laughs> Anything else you would like to add before we finish? Oh God, I'm trying to think. Uh, I just think thank you so much for letting me, I actually really love talking about the show because it just makes me relive how many beautiful memories I have of the show and how many awesome, like just how many awesome moments have been a part of the last like year and a half that we've been doing it. I, I can't believe we're already at like 560 shows or something. And I hope that we do 500 more, like at least, if not more. <laughs> and the last question? Yes. How do you keep your performance fresh after so many you know, oh, shows? Yeah. You know what I always tell myself, first of all, I have so much fun doing the show. I think it's just, I get to play different people. I get to put on accents. I get to put on different hats. It's like, it's the most fun you could have. Like, it's the most fun you could have. You get to dance around, you get to stomp your feet. You get to, like, honestly, I think this show has it all. Also, what's so great about this show is that it's like, it's happy, it's sad, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry. Like at any moment, it just kind of like push and pulls and it's just such an amazing story. And I always tell myself before I go on stage that the people watching it that night are seeing it for the first time. And like, you never know who might be like touch, whose lives you might change, who's, I don't know. Like you just never know kind of what might happen. And it just feels like, um, I want, I feel like I have a responsibility to tell the story uh, the same, if not better than last time that I, I told it, um, just because it's an important story and people are seeing it for the first time and we're feeding off of the audience and, and every performance is kind of like, feels sort of like a first date, you know what I mean? You kind of, you come in and you're like meeting the audience for the first time and you're like putting your best foot forward, first impressions, like kind of all that stuff. So I just always tell myself that like, I'm just doing it like it's the first and last time I'll ever do it. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. This Thanks for having me. <laughs>